What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here for our typical Sunday morning week interview week that was running through the various different sports cards, a little bit of news, not really much news today, to be honest. Um, biggest and wildest crazy thing going on this past week in cards, in my opinion, and I think I'm just going to tease this a little bit because I'm probably going to record something separate on it, maybe for Monday. Uh, the WWE Prism stuff. Man, are the prices going crazy on that. Some are real. Some are fake. Uh, there was a whole eBay shenanigans around the uh, John Cena color blast that was running at auction that went for 11 k Once again, I'll probably just talk about this in its own separate thing early this week. And just the general WWE craze because the Prism name is on it. Uh, lots of other content creators uh, have done stuff on both on YouTube and on IG talking about why did no one ever care about Topps Chrome just because it has the Prism name on it. What's really going on here? You know, is this feels like it's just getting a lot of hype right now. The FOMO beast is running out of control. And... I don't know. It just I thought about actually grabbing a box. My LCS had it for 975 and I passed. If it would have been 850 to 800, I would have bought a box to rip on the channel, but they came out at 975, so I took a hard pass on that. In hindsight, I guess that looks like an okay deal, but the whole thing just feels a little FOMO-y to me. It just feels like it's getting run up by the FOMO beast. And I'm just going to stay away from it. Uh, maybe it holds value. Maybe it doesn't. I honestly don't know. I think the sealed boxes will hold value. But I am not so sure about the singles. I'm sure the color blasts will sell well and sell strong because they're kind of a unique card and they are pretty rare. But generally speaking, I'm going to steer clear of the WWE stuff. I love the WWE in high school. Loved it as a kid. But I have no connection to the ultra modern wrestling stars, if you will. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Uh, if you missed it last night, I did put out, a, I don't, I haven't really been released so much in the way of Saturday videos. Uh, I had a really good mail day video slash card show pickup video. I was going to release it early in the week and I just decided to release it Saturday afternoon. Uh, so if you missed that one, go check it out. Uh, and with that being said, we'll go ahead and, and dive into market movers. We'll hit a quick word from our sponsor, myslabs.com and then dive into some charts and graphs. Uh, so, once again, shout out to my slabs continuing to sponsor the Sunday morning show. So, quick word from them, and we'll be right back. The platform designed by collectors for collectors just got even better. MySlabs.com is proud to now feature dedicated sections for both raw cards and raw comic books. Browse over 100,000 slab collectibles authenticated by the industry's most trusted grading companies. Then check out a massive selection of sealed wax and now raw singles and raw lots. Join a passionate, no-nonsense community of nearly 50,000 members and enjoy some of the best buyer and seller protection in the business. And as always, MySlabs offers one of the most disruptive pricing models in the hobby with seller fees as low as only 1%. So the next time you're forced to pay 10%, 20% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com, the low fee marketplace by collectors for collectors. Once again, thanks to MySlabs for sponsoring today's video and the rest of the Sunday videos throughout the month of April. Baseball season is upon us. Uh, that's the other big thing in the sports world. MLB opening day this weekend and the master stuff as well. Though I have not been following that closely. I'm not a big golf guy. I'm sure I'll throw it on on Sunday because uh, that's just kind of what you do, whether you're in the golf or not. But yeah, baseball, definitely the hot thing so far. The only thing, and I'm recording this Saturday evening, the only big takeaways from the baseball stuff is the prospect guys have struggled a little. I mean, it's two games. It's two and a half games. It's really hard to say, but they, they've been off to relatively slow starts. Witt had the game-winning hit uh, against the Cleveland baseball team. J-Rod struggled a little bit. I haven't heard anything at all about Torkelson. Um and no one's really come out of the gates completely on fire. So our, Soto already has a home run. 
Um, but uh, Vlad's had an okay game. So it's, it's really too soon to say kind of how that stuff's going to shake out. We'll, we'll get another week on that. We are going to look at some baseball charts today. But uh, let's go ahead and dive into Market Movers. If you want to check out Market Movers, link in the description down below. They have a new promo code that if you sign up and you've never used it before, you get the first month for a buck. So if you've been curious about it, now's your chance to go check it out. Uh, links down there along with the coupon code that will get you the first month for a dollar. And they have unveiled a new tool this week that I am playing around with. Now, not refined this yet. I haven't like done a super big deep dive. This just came out on Friday and I spent Saturday playing around with it a little bit. But they have a market pulse is what they are calling it. And essentially it is a collection of cards uh, grouped together, kind of like, I don't know, mutual funds, probably not the right word, but kind of that style, like a collection of cards. And there are drop down menus here that let you choose what you want. So there's all, there's a ton of, I'm scroll through them here. There's a bunch of different collections, uh, including a whole player's different sports, different eras that they'll group them all together. So what we have on the screen here, and I went back to January 1st through these. I don't know if we're going to look at these every week. Maybe we'll look at them once a month. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure out how I best want to use this tool. But for the purposes of this, since it's the first time seeing it, I went back to January 1st. So essentially we are looking at almost four months worth, or four months worth of data at this point. The blue line is basketball 2018 to 2020. The pink line is basketball 2010 to 2017. And you could see how those collections, if you will, have performed over that time. Uh, the black line here is the starting point. Uh, you could see 2010 through 2017 trended up slightly. Ultra modern has essentially trended down right from the get, but then eventually modern basketball, the 2010 to 2017 stuff catches up with it and they both kind of pull back, pull back uh, a little bit of a divide there on those. Once again, I'm not 100% sure how I want to use this yet, but essentially this gives you a very macro level look at what the modern NBA market is doing from 2010 to 2017, it has essentially been trending down since the beginning of the year. Uh, we are down about, what is this? 8.5% and 16.5% depending on the era that you are looking at. So let's just split the difference there and say that modern basketball is down about 12% as a market. So I find that kind of interesting. Uh, I am sure if you looked at this for the prior year, which actually I probably could do, um, I think you could go back uh, quite a ways on this, but just an interesting little tool there that we're going to check in on every once in a while. I've pulled some other ones here. This is baseball, same thing, uh, 2018 to 2020, so ultra modern, and then modern 2010 to 2017. Also going back to the beginning of the year, so January 1st, 2022, uh, you could see 2010 to 2017 actually was above water for a while pulled back a little bit and has crept itself back up again. Ultra modern crept down pretty low, actually bottomed out in March. I wonder how much of this has to do with the lockout stuff. Uh, and then as you can see, has really rallied here uh, the last week or two. Actually the last week basically has shot right back up again. Uh, it went from 11% down all the way up to only 5% down. So a 6% increase once again at a macro level. So, same thing, if we combine the two areas together and kind of split the difference here, generally speaking, the modern baseball market is down just a few percentage points. Not too bad. Typically, you would kind of expect to see it up during this period, but I do think all the labor disputes kind of suck the wind out of the sails of baseball a little bit. But it has performed better than basketball has. Once again, macro level speaking, not looking at individual cards per se. And you can scroll through here and look at all the individual cards. You could sort it just like you would anything else in market movers. Another interesting one, football, same thing. Ultra modern, modern, once again, same thing. January 1st through April 9th. Trending along and also kind of seeing a bit of a pullback here in March as well. And both markets are under. 
Uh, modern football is down 25%. That's 2010 to 2017. The big one there is Mahomes. Uh, basically, that grouping will go as Mahomes goes because his prices are so high. If they see significant decrease, uh, it'll really cut that market indice by a lot. Uh, ultra modern football down about 9%. So this would put it at about the Super Bowl here, this peak. And this makes sense that the blue ultra modern was up quite a bit, probably carried by Joe Burrow, honestly. And then we see the pullback when they got eliminated from the Super Bowl. Uh, and then just a general market pullback, period. So it'll be interesting to see when this kind of bottoms out as we work through the off season. So once again, just kind of found this interesting, not 100% sure how much we'll use this, but I, I do like the idea of checking in on it, maybe do some more historical analysis with it going back to previous, previous off seasons and stuff. Here's another interesting one. This is LeBron's market pulse. Same thing, just for consistency's sake, went back to January 1st. Uh, you can see at the first of the year, he actually spiked up a decent amount, was up 10% as a whole. Uh, and then has pulled back. He is all the way down to negative 16%. We'll be curious to see how this goes, given the Lakers' woes. They are done. LeBron will not be in the playoffs. His season is over. The Lakers' season is over. And just interested to see how this performs, say, like, over the summer. Uh, especially depending on what the Lakers can and cannot do in regards to remaking that team. They're kind of hamstrung by the Westbrook contract. They're about to try to dump that off on someone. I do not see how they can bring him back for another season. So uh, once again, just interesting here. And there are other players you could do Mahomes uh, and a few others. I believe Zion's in here, and I'm sure they will expand this out. One of the questions that I ask, and I, this is not in here, at the moment, but what I would like to see uh, is the ability to custom build one of these. If I could create my own, I would find a lot of value in that. That might be me more as a content creator because I have a My Collection tool that I import my cards into, but I would like to build my own indices and kind of say like, here's what all the Topps Chrome refractors are doing or something like that. I I'm not exactly sure how I would use it yet, but the wheels have been spinning uh, about wanting to create my own indice for the purposes of this, so. Let's move in and look at some individual players. Now, baseball season has started, and as I said, not a ton has happened, but one of the players that have started off fairly hot, and once again, we're looking at like a two-game sample size here, uh, is a player that I do like. Uh, I have one of his cards. Devers, Rafael Devers from the Boston Red Sox, uh, had a nice, very strong first game uh, against the Yankees, and his stuff did see a little bit of a spike and a little bit of a run-up in general to the start of the season. What I've done on most of these, especially for baseball, is went back 14 days just to kind of see uh, how the run-up to the season went and the first couple of days of the season. And what I have here for Devers is his base refractor and his X-fractor, both up 45% over the last two weeks. Uh, and there's another one of his refractors are actually ending at auction tonight. That has not ended yet. So we'll see where that ends in relation to this 190 number. Maybe this pulls back a little bit. Maybe it raises up a little bit, but his X Fractor did spike up uh, a decent amount based off of the other night's game because that card sold basically during that game, I believe. So Devers heating up a little bit, checking in on the kids. Bobby Witt, much discussed, looking at a handful of his cards here. Uh, this is his Bowman Chrome, first Bowman Chrome Refractor, non auto. Uh, first Bowman Chrome, just the base auto, Refractor auto. Uh, base Chrome rookie or first first Bowman and then the Mega Box Refractor, uh, the Mojo looking one there. Once again, 14 day time period. Wanted to kind of see how his prices have done on this last little leg of spring training and into the season. And you can see he's performed quite well with most stuff up about 20 to 35 uh, percent with a few of his higher end stuff actually lagging behind. Uh, the first Bowman Auto is only up 10%. The Refractor is only up 6%. Only a couple sales. But his base Refractor is up 35%. His first Bowman Chrome is up 37%. Uh, and his Mega Box is up 20%. I have a feeling, especially this number right here, unless he really starts hot, this 300 to 350 number is going to be his peak, and we'll probably start to see some pullback on that. That's my guess. Uh, like I said, we talked about it in a video about a week or so ago. 
I'm just not big on holding these guys that got big run-ups into season. I think your best bet is to move them right now in the spring. And going along with him, Julio Rodriguez, a.k.a. J-Rod, got added to the Mariners at the last minute. Kind of, I don't know if it was completely unexpected, given that everyone else kind of did, but it did seem to catch people off guard. Same thing, 14-day run-up here. A couple less cards, though. Uh, we have his first prospect auto, first Bowman auto base. Uh, just his first Bowman Chrome uh, and his first Bowman Chrome Refractor. Pretty much across the board, 23%, 23%, 33% on these on the increase during the last two weeks. And most of that happened in the last seven days post the announcements uh, that really kind of juiced his prices leading into the season here. We'll see what he does. Once again, I would prefer not to carry these guys in, but... I will be closely watching their prices to see if there's opportunity to slide back into them if they struggle and if prices pull back on them. Uh, I do like J-Rod as a prospect. I think Witt's pretty interesting as a prospect. Same with Wander Franco, all these super young guys. But I really feel like the play here is, is hope these guys start slow and then take a gamble on them. I would not be gambling at these inflated prices on the hype of the call-up. That's just me, though. Switch gears here, hop into basketball. Uh, the NBA playoffs are basically here, as wild as that is. It really feels like it kind of snuck up on everybody, but we're essentially here. There's one, I think Sunday is the final day of the regular season. Uh, and then a lot of teams are still jockeying for position. I know personally, my Cleveland Cavaliers really need to win on Sunday. Uh, it does not sound like they're going to have Jared Allen back today. Uh, they placed face the Bucks, but it sounds like the Bucks are going to rest a bunch of people. I believe, if my memory is correct, if they win, they are the seventh seed, so they would host the play-in game versus uh, having the Nets host the play-in game. Very, very important for them to get two shots. That team just got decimated by injuries, so it's going to be very interesting as the NBA market as a whole to kind of see where we go from here. Now it is all about who keeps moving on. And as players get eliminated, their markets are probably going to drop. Um, so we'll see who makes runs for it. I think this is going to be a very interesting NBA playoffs. I think it's fairly wide open, especially in the East. There are probably three or four teams that all have a chance. I think the Bucks are the favorite in the West. It's the Suns, it's the Suns, and it's the Suns. Uh, they look like a dominant force if they don't make the finals out of the West, I would be shocked, to be quite honest. Uh, and I think, you know, Devin Booker could see a pretty nice rise in prices during the playoffs, assuming he plays well. Obviously, risk here, though. Any of these playoff guys that you're speculating on, very narrow windows to sell this stuff. And we don't know how big of price increases they are going to get. Uh, you know, will you even be able to make profit on it if it only goes up 10 or 15%? Say you buy into someone like Booker you got to at least be able to eclipse the eBay fees. If you're doing your business on eBay, maybe you're selling cash, maybe you're using it as trade bait at a show or something. Plenty of different ways to skin the cat, but the NBA playoff market will be very interesting to follow along. I have the players that I have. You know, I am mostly going to be looking for deals that slide through the cracks as players get eliminated, watching auctions on guys, uh, on superstar players that get bounced early. Uh, especially if someone gets bounced in the first round. Uh, those are the types of things that I'm going to be looking at. I don't think I'm going to try to ride the waves of the in-playoff market, like buy a player now and try to fi flip them in two weeks, three weeks, uh, if they continue to win. I got burned on that pretty hard last year with Donovan Mitchell and some other guys, Lucas specifically. Um, but we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Uh, so looking at some individual players here, Zion. Silver Prism continues to slowly creep up. We've talked about this card a couple weeks in a row now. It's up 20%. Once again, this is over the last 14 days, so covering the last two weeks. Up 280 bucks, over 1700 bucks now, creeping on 1730, and this is kind of what I thought was going to happen. Zion's out. He's not going to play. And... I could see his market con continuing to slowly creep up as we move throughout the summer and as we approach 
uh, the national and next year's upcoming NBA season. And then heaven forbid he makes noise on trying to force his way out of there this year. It'd be unprecedented. But if he tries to force his way out of there and goes to another market, look out. Don't know if it'll happen or not. Maybe he'll come back next year to the Pels. Uh, maybe some of it will play on what they do in the playoffs. But as long as he doesn't get hurt in the offseason, I think it's actually pretty safe to get into his cards now and just sit on him throughout the summer and dump him before he even plays the game. Uh, and I would probably dump on the early side. I don't know that I would get greedy on that just in case he gets hurt in preseason camp. And I have a feeling a lot of other people will be trying to do the same thing. Could be wrong. We'll see what happens. Uh, just circling back on one more from the prior week. We talked about this card last week as well. This is the KD Tops Chrome. I talked about kind of missing the boat on these and kind of always wanting one. Uh, and I got to actually some DMs from people saying, hey, like, you know, if, if you're looking for one, let me know or whatever. And I'm like, ah, I'm actually good. I think it's going to get cheaper. Uh, and so far, it does continue to get cheaper. Down another 7%, 150 bucks. And the Nets... I don't think they're long for the playoffs. I said last week, there's there's a decent chance. Maybe they don't even get out of the plan. Some people scoffed at that. But I think it's on the table. The team cannot stop anybody. Anybody. And if they make the first, if they, if they do make the actual playoffs, I don't know that I see them getting out of the first round. Uh, I don't know exactly who they're going to match up with yet. We'll kind of see. Maybe we'll do a little NBA playoff preview uh, this week once everything's kind of settled in. But... I don't know. I, I just wouldn't feel good about them. I think there is going to be a nice opportunity to buy KD over the summer. To my earlier point, he would be one of the names that I would be watching if they get bounced early uh, and see if some Durant stuff slips through the cracks. Because uh, hopefully next year that team can come back full power with a healthy Ben Simmons uh, and some more offseason tweaks, bring in some more vets. The young guys get a little extra time, all that stuff, and, and just kind of see what happens with that team. So... He is definitely one that I would be watching to see if his stuff dips. Last but not least, let's talk some football really quick. Just an interesting one here. I went back like two months on this one. This is Deshaun Watson's 2017 Silver Prism. I just found this very interesting. So this was about a $550 card over the early parts of the offseason right after the NFL playoffs. Here is where he got cleared and got traded to the Browns. This all happened. You know, all at around the same time here, it went from 550 bucks all the way up to 900. This was your window to sell. Since then, it has been backsliding and is all the way back down to lower than what it was before. It's down to $493 now from a point where it was at, you know, 550 in February. It's actually lower now. So, once again, when this stuff spikes like this, it's just another example of don't get cute on this stuff. If you bought him cheap, this was your spot to sell. Right here. Right on the initial news of the trade, the news of the clearing. Move it. Just move it. And then what happened? The steam runs out. The eye of Sauron goes and focuses on the next shiny object. In this case right now. John Cena color blast and WWE prison boxes uh, and whatever else people are chasing zero cool jackass cards, Marvel card, whatever it moves on to the next shiny object. And then all of a sudden everyone's like, ah, yeah, Deshaun Watson's on the Browns. Cool. Whatever. And then we are right back to less than what it was pre market inflation or not inflation, but pre market spike from the news, the clearing of the charges and the trade itself. Uh, and then it's just been a steady decline ever since. If I go back and let's run this from 311 uh, and just kind of see, I'll even go to the initial spike up and not even the pure peak. Down 40%, $318. Just wild times here uh, for the Deshaun Watson market. So just a lesson to be learned here. When this stuff spikes, just move it, take the profit, and move it into the next thing. One last one, uh, just someone that was creeping up a little bit that I noticed, Josh Allen-based Prism PSA 10 is ever so slightly slowly creeping up. And this is kind of what we see during this NFL offseason on guys like this. Uh, it's not big, huge jumps. It's just slow and steady. 
This card over the last, once again, two weeks is up 20%, 135 bucks from 565 to 700. It got a little boost the last couple days. I'm wondering if a little of that is from the Diggs extension. Now knowing that he is 100% locked in, if that gave Allen a little bit of a boost there. But either way, he was slowly trending up in the correct direction and then got a little spike at the end there. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. I don't see his stuff necessarily crashing back down over the summer. It's probably going to continue to slowly and steadily move its way up, up until about the national. And then, you know, it'll do its thing once we do the run up to the season. Um, the interesting thing, we kind of talked about this with uh, on Sports Cards Anonymous's live stream on Friday night. Someone asked a question about selling football. What's the best time? Last year, the best time was essentially a lot of guys peaked at the NFL draft. Uh, and then the second best time is around the national. So I think those are your two primary exit points. And I think it could vary from year to year, depending on which one is the peak. The reason we say the national is because it's the very beginning of the NFL preseason. Usually the national lines up with the Hall of Fame game. It's kind of the kickoff to NFL is back. And that usually tends to be around the peak of the market. It's also before anyone gets hurt or any of that stuff. Uh, and then the NFL draft, obviously, just because there's a lot of eyeballs on the NFL. So I think those are your two primary exit points for football cards are those two right there, the draft and around the national. So we'll see. We'll see where the market peaks this year. Maybe it's a little bit different. Never seems to be the same. It will be nice. It's nice the further that we get away from January, February, March of 2021, we could kind of maybe start to see patterns again. We get away from that massive spike where everything went to the moon uh, and kind of settle into a new normalcy. So uh, once again, that's all I have for you guys and girls today. Smash the like button if you haven't. Subscribe if you're not. Go check out the mail day video that I posted Saturday night. Go check out my slabs. And if you want your own charts and graphs, go get a month free of market movers in the link in the description down below. We will catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.